fact. Here at Subject Zero Laboratories, we're always on the lookout to improve our technologies, especially the ones you should worry about. We do this through hard work, perseverance, and every YouTuber number one weapon, intense research. Nice! This topic should get me some views. Hello everyone, Subject Zero here. After our most successful bomb of all time went mainstream, a lot of our clients complained that they got bored after the first 10 minutes because let's face it, Zarina takes way too long to destroy a planet. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, many of you asked if we had anything smaller and lighter. Through the years of intense research and testing, we were able to cut down the time it takes to destroy a planet from 14 and a half hours to less than 6 minutes. Unintentionally, the same time as my average time watch. Introducing the Planetary Rage Quit Utility Device. Infinitely more elegant. Safe. Thousands of times more compact and lighter. You can carry it in your backpack. Take it to work to show off to your colleagues. And most importantly, a joy to watch when it's triggered. How does our technology work? It's simple really. We use magnetic fields to keep antimatter at bay. The energy is provided by letting some antimatter react with the surrounding shields, generating heat that is absorbed by the coolant around the machine. This in turn generates electricity for the device. Think of it as a self-powering device like Fusion Tokamak, except that you don't need energy to make things react and release energy. When it's time to detonate, all we need to do is cut down the electricity remotely. Trust me, you don't want to be near this thing when this happens. And voila, a beautiful explosion. While the Zarina Bomba is immovable with a mass of about 5.5 trillion kilograms, can take it anywhere, so we are currently using it to power our new railgun. The Planetary Rage Quit Utility Device can be transported with ease. With an antimatter mass of a little over 1 kilogram, it delivers the same power as a single Zar Bomba. 3850 km square of pure destruction with a fraction of fuel. Now, what would happen if we had the same antimatter mass as the Tsar Bomba? For that, we have something bigger. Say hello to its big brother, Boris. Yeah, we gotta come up with better names. That is 27 tons of antimatter, equivalent to 23,000 Tsar Bombas. Our product delivers all the damage you're looking for. But don't just take my word for it. Let us visualize it in action. At this point, we would like to remind you that at Subject Zero Laboratories, safety is our number one priority. That is why all our tests are conducted on another Earth, from the multiverse. Wait, what? How did that happen? An actual flat Earth? Hmm, funny how every other planet is a sphere, right? Ah, jeez, I know what happened. One second. Now that's better. We can proceed with the test. Extrapolating the area of destruction, that would give us a total of 45 million kilometers square. That is almost one-tenth of Earth's seven surface, gone in a few seconds. Not like we need them anyway. Putting this video together took a lot of intense research. Trust me, there are a lot of videos out there talking about this but usually they don't give us the true scale and magnitude of what is possible with antimatter. Exaggerating things does help us gasp the destruction that a bomb like that would cause, except that it might also give us a false idea of what would truly happen. Take this for example, the fireball blast of the Tsar bomb was about 8 kilometers in diameter. Of course, we can't just take that number and multiply by 23,000 because that would give us an absurdity of a fireball the size of Earth. 23 times. And that 45 million kilometers square that I talked about would be true if we had 23,000 bombs. 
the actual destruction of that much concentrator power would be completely different. Fortunately, there's nothing on the planet man-made that can truly give us the magnitude of this much power. The only and best way to visualize this would be to compare it to meteor impacts. And that is exactly what I did. For weeks, I searched the vastness of the interweb for knowledge and wisdom. How much damage would this much energy cost to the planet, I asked. I've located many websites with intricate explanations and much more complex equations, describing how to calculate crater diameter, shockwave, and damage. After three weeks of pure research and analysis, I came to realize something extremely important. PhD people can't make website for sh**. I mean, just look at this garbage. One day, I realized that my planets weren't looking as good as I wanted in my animations. So then I decided to download higher resolution images so it would look better at the end of my work, because I like to do everything myself. And after a lot of research, that's when I landed on this garbage website. You don't even have the option to download off the image. Regardless, I just downloaded everything that I could. And then after an entire day of work, I realized that a lot of the images that I needed to put together and make one big image were not available. A lot of them were missing. So then I had to go back to the website and try to locate them, but they're nowhere to be found. Bruh. And it turned out that I had to dig deeper into the rabbit hole to find the rest of the images. Guess what? Some dude at CG Trader actually deserves the 40 bucks they're charging for it. So then I just bought it. After weeks of endless calculations and much more, I got my numbers. And as always, I had doubts. Let's just say I have a tendency of mixing numbers. So I scratched that idea and just did the next best thing, which is locate something that would calculate things for me. And I did. I found a website called the Down to Earth Simulator. All I had to do is match the energy of the bomb with a meteor. And that's it. Easy. According to the website, this much energy is equivalent to a meteor 267 times less powerful than the Chicxulub impactor. It would create a crater 16 kilometers in diameter and 700 meters deep. Heat and shockwave would destroy anything in a 500 kilometer radius. And for those of you wondering, yes, I got it all wrong. Just to put this into perspective, the Tsar bomb destruction diameter was 120 kilometers. Our bomb, just the crater, is 16 kilometers in diameter and 700 meters deep. If you want to survive the blast, you would have to be at least 500 kilometers away from the blast center and hope that there's enough obstacles in between you and the bomb. You can always just, instead of running away from the bomb, run towards the bomb. Instead of burning to death, you can always just evaporate to death. Less painful, I guess. However, you can relax, because even if you wanted to destroy the planet, we would have to wait 100 billion years to destroy anything that we can with just one gram. That is how much we can produce with current technology. Not everything about antimatter has to be about destruction. There is actually one very good reason to increase production. And that is, to put it simply, because it is by far the best fuel for future space endeavors. Something that I'm going to cover extensively in my next video. All right, folks, that's it. We're done here. Cramps, cramps. Oh, my foot is cramping. Uh, ah. Ah. Oh, man. Oh, 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 it's getting worse. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Oh, it's not getting better. Ow, ow.